Hi there, my friend. It's Pastor Greg once again. Another thought about persuasiveness today on transforming the world. So I wanted to start today with a rather divisive question. Um, it's a question that a lot of people are divided on and very passionate on both camps. So let's let let me ask you this: When I say chicken and waffles, do you think of a Belgian waffle covered in chunks of chicken and smothered in chicken gravy? Or do you think of a stack of waffles with a few pieces of fried chicken next to it? That <laughs> People really argue about that. They divide over what is the proper way to serve chicken and waffles. Because of my heritage, I have a Pennsylvania Dutch heritage. My great-grandfather barely spoke English. Uh, he actually preached from a German Bible. Uh, my, yeah, um, my heritage is, is a strong Pennsylvania Dutch which would explain why I get sentences and words mixed up as I'm trying to speak um, proper English. Anyway, for me, the only way to have chicken and waffles is it for me to cover it in chunks of chicken and gravy. And, oh my, can my wife make chicken and, uh, chicken and waffles? Wow, it is so good. But not long ago, I was in North Carolina and um, chicken and waffles was on the menu at a restaurant that we stopped in. And there was a waffle and a piece of fried chicken. And I'm thinking, you folks don't know how to properly serve this meal. <laughs> Which probably wasn't the right thing to say when you're uh, seven hours away from home. Anyway, I, I actually heard something the other day. Somebody says, oh, yeah, they put chicken, on, uh, they put ketchup on their pot pie. And I'm thinking, what? How? Wouldn't the ketchup just melt into all the broth? Oh, <laughs> they weren't talking about the right kind of pot pie. They were talking about uh, what looks like a pie. And I'm talking about the slippery stuff with all the, the you know, the noodles. It's a different culture. You know, what, <laughs> when we lived in Iowa, I had no idea why they wanted to put my groceries in a sack. I mean, I, I could go on. The point is, there are certain things in life that we don't have in common. Some of these are cultural differences. Others are merely a matter of preference. For example, I, I prefer my bacon a little, a little chewy. But again, that's just my preference. One church baptizes an individual one time backwards. Another baptizes three times forward different methods to accomplish the same thing. One church sings hallelujah and another sings alleluia. Different words used to praise the same Christ. So in our endeavors to persuade folks to turn to Jesus, it's important that we don't major on the minor things. And question number three in the self-evaluation section says, do I quarrel or argue over unimportant details? You see, arguing about the proper mode of baptism isn't going to win anyone to Christ. You're merely arguing over style, not purpose. And the purpose of baptism is much different than the style of baptism. Do you follow me here? Paul tells Timothy, he says, don't, don't waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. 1 Timothy 4.7 and he also tells Titus to not get involved in foolish discussions about spiritual pedigrees or in quarrels and fights about obedience to Jewish laws. It's Titus 3.9. As we consider the subject of our persuasive interactions with others, we need to keep in mind what we are persuading them to. Do we want them to accept Jesus or our opinions on things. And I think we both know which of those is truly important. My name is Pastor Greg. This is Transforming the World, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.